What's up, y'all? This is Eddie Wilson coming from the UFC gym, Sam Bruno. It's 1032, and I got some beast training. I should see the high roller. Red man RG. And we got the cardio right here. Putting in the work on the pull up bars. Okay. I KO Queen Christine. Got two killers on the mat doing some work on her. Oh, hitting the armbar. Yes, Justin, the marvelous. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Scratch knuckling the cold going in. Here, I'm going to show you what I can do. This is why they call me the bride smile. <laughs> Bob Merowitz, founder of SEG, Semaphore Entertainment Group, had no intentions of creating the sport of mixed martial arts. He just wanted answers to questions. The first being when he asked a friend who studied Taekwondo if that combat discipline could defeat karate in a fight. His friend responded with, they can't fight, it's different rules. But Merowitz was not satisfied with this answer. He brought the topic to a creative meeting with his company and his staff liked the idea. So did advertising executive Art Davey and noted master of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Rory and Gracie who pitched their idea for the same kind of event to SEG. SEG gave Davey and Gracie a chance, and on November 12, 1993, Merowitz was going to get a chance to see his questions answered. This was the start of UFC, which stands for Ultimate Fighting Championship. The Professional Mixed Martial Arts, or MMA, organization follows a rich history and tradition of competitive MMA dating back to the Olympic Games in Athens. The early UFC tournaments featured very little rules, resulting in low blows, hair pulling, and headbutts which often led to brutal and bloody conflicts. Today, UFC is the fastest growing sports organization in the world. It is known as the world's biggest and most successful mixed martial arts league. It stands as the world's leading MMA promoter, offering sports events that have sold out some of the biggest arenas and stadiums across the globe. In order for the franchise to reach its potential, UFC had to face a turnover of ownership. In 2001, Zufa LLC, which is owned by brothers Lorenzo and Frank Fertitta, along with Dana White, bought the company for $2 million. On July 11, 2017, William Morris and Devor Entertainment, which is one of the world's successful sports firm, bought the company for $4 billion. The deal marks a 2,000% return for the Vertita brothers when they bought it in 2001. This deal also marks the largest sale of a franchise. UFC sponsors include Bud Light, Reebok, Harley-Davidson, Metro PCS, EA Sports, Toyo Tires, and Fram Auto Filters. UFC also has a 7-year broadcast rights deal with Fox that is worth $700 million. The Fertitta brothers and Dana White will still have a minor ownership of the company, and Dana White will still remain in his role as UFC's president. According to SMP, the USF has a 75 over 25 mix when it comes to their revenue. 75% of their revenue currently come from PPV, while the additional 25% comes from everything else, sponsorship, TV deals, merchandising, etc. The deal with Fox is not only expected to build new marketable stars and increase PPV revenue, but it also helps to equalize the USF revenue base through increased sponsorship and TV revenues. I had grown up a big boxing fan in Las Vegas. And I had seen that that sport had generated billions of dollars over the last hundred years, yet there was no brand associated with boxing. So we felt like there was a void in combat sports. And at least with the UFC, while it was controversial in 2001, the fact was is that it was a brand. There was organization around it. And we felt like that when we acquired it, that if we put in uh, the right rules and regulations, really ran towards regulation, helped to create a sport, and really focus on building the brand that we could create an opportunity for business and that's essentially what we've done. During the early days of the sport, the UFC was suffering from a lack of media coverage and education around mixed martial arts. However, with the redesigning of their roles and more effective marketing, the UFC began to grow to new levels of popularity. When Dana White launched the first season of The Ultimate Fighter in 2005, things really seemed to explode. The reality show brought MMA to people who were totally unfamiliar with the sport. Within a few years of the show's debut, the UFC was riding an all-time high in popularity. 
to continue their marketing momentum, the UFC aimed their efforts towards social media. Dana White exploited the power of social media by hiring PR firm Digital Royalty to teach fighters how to properly use social media and quickly transform 200 fighters into active users. The UFC turned to social media and content marketing to break through their early struggling stages. In spite of their official training on promoting themselves via social media, some fighters found social media problematic. Former Strikeforce MMA fighter Chris Cyborg had a rough start in the UFC with Magano, who commented on her appearance to be of a man's. Chris didn't take well of that comment on Twitter and assaulted Magana when she saw her on a UFC athlete retreat in Las Vegas back in May of this year. Chris had been found guilty of taking Stanozolo anabolic steroids on September 23, 2011 and was suspended from competition for a year and fined $2,500. John Jones, on the other hand, is a two-time light heavyweight champion who has been found guilty with using hydroxychromophere which is a banned substance for UFC fighters, which reduces estrogen. Substance abuse and social media wars are a part of the culture of UFC that fighters struggle with and learn to cope with. UFC and mixed martial arts is often depicted as brutal, ruthless, and unnecessarily violent. Is UFC ethical? Should it be banned? For example, in New York, UFC events were banned in 1997. 20 years ago, the sport was less regulated and less organized, which led former governor George Pataki to create a legislation that would ban MMA in New York. They were the only state in the U.S. to ban the sport, when an anti-USC movement called Unfit for Children convinced New York legislators to approve the ban. UFC has also began to organize their own charities and fundraisers to tackle problems outside of the ring. They often hold auctions and pledge drives that raise millions of dollars that go towards veterans through non-profit companies like Hire Heroes USA, a company that helps veterans find careers when they return home. UFC also donates to youth groups, specifically to at-risk youth who live in poverty-stricken cities. It gives young children an opportunity to learn a few lessons about fighting and perseverance, teaching them to bring out the fighter in everyone. UFC programming can now routinely be viewed across North American television, and their pay-per-views are available to anybody on the planet with a satellite dish. The expectation is if the UFC was sold to one of China's business heavyweights, that it would open the door to an emerging financial market. There was the idea that the company's key market, the US, was mature, in the sense its popularity level is established. But with the huge population based in China, the potential long-term of a sport that has a natural appeal because so many people like to watch fights, that the sky was the limit. 